Hey guys, welcome back to Med which Made Simple. In this video, we're going to see about penicillins, which belongs to beta lactam group of antibiotics. Now let's begin. The beta lactam group of antibiotics basically includes four subgroups of antibiotics, which includes penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams. The common thing between all these antibiotics is that they all have a beta lactam ring in their structure. Now let's see about the structure of beta lactam antibiotics. This picture shows the structure of cephalosporins, which is a member of beta lactams. As you can see, in the center of this structure, there is a beta lactam ring. This beta lactam ring is common in all the beta lactam antibiotics, such as penicillin, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams. Okay. What varies is the side chains which attach to the beta lactam ring. This side chain varies in various various beta lactam antibiotics, giving them their unique characteristics and properties. Okay. In this video, we're going to see about penicillins. Okay, the penicillins are basically available as salts. They're basically sodium and potassium salts of penicillin. They're more stable compared to being in liquid form. They're acid labile, so they cannot be taken orally because when they're taken orally, the gastric acid which is present in our stomach will degrade and inactivate the penicillin, thus decreasing the availability of the penicillin. They are highly water soluble, so they can be mixed in liquids to make it solution and they can be injected into the body. They are unstable in liquid state, so they are freshly prepared every time before they are injected. Okay? Penicillins are basically bactericidal, which means they will kill the bacteria. The mechanism of action of penicillin is, is that they inhibit the synthesis of bacterial cell wall and thus kills the bacteria. There is something known as penicillin binding proteins, which are also known as PBPs. Penicillin binding proteins basically includes transpeptidases and other proteins. These are the target sites of penicillins. The transpeptidases and other proteins are basically involved in the cross-linking between the various peptide chains okay, in the bacteria. So they are basically helpful in maintaining, in creating a very strong integrity between integrity in the cell wall of bacteria. So what, what the penicillin does is they will bind to the transpeptidases and the other proteins which are involved in cell wall synthesis and they inhibit the cross-linking between peptide chains of neighboring strands. By doing so, they inhibit the synthesis of bacterial cell wall, so the bacteria will die. So, now we'll see about penicillin G, also known as PNG. This is the basic penicillin. This is also known as benzyl penicillin. Okay? This is a narrow spectrum antibiotic. They are active against only a small group of bacteria. They are mainly used against gram-positive bacteria. They are poorly absorbed orally because they are acid labile as I have told you earlier. Intramuscular route is preferred for administering penicillin G. They are excreted by kidneys and the most commonly involved mechanism is by tubular secretion. Glomerular filtration is also involved to some extent. This is the pharmacokinetic part of penicillin G. Now we will see the very important part which is the uses of penicillin G. Penicillin G can be used to treat streptococcal infections such as pharyngitis and otitis media, etc. But they are rarely used because of the high risk associated with using penicillin. Okay? And better drugs are available to replace the penicillin. Okay? But in cases like syphilis, penicillin is the drug of choice. Okay? You got to remember this. And the treatment of gonorrhea, penicillin G have been used for many years. But due to the development of resistance, alternative drugs are being preferred for treatment of gonorrhea in recent days. Penicillin G can also be used for prophylaxis in cases such as rheumatic fever and bacterial endocarditis. This is a very important slide. Please make a note on this slide. Let's see about the adverse drug reactions of using penicillin G. This can be very minimal starting from local irritation at the injection site to severe conditions such as thrombophobitis, bleeding, hypersensitivity, and anaphylaxis. 
Anaphylaxis is very rare, but still it can be life-threatening and so severe. Okay. So before administering penicillin to a patient, you first need to do a test known as scratch test, which is also known as intradermal test. In this test, you'll basically inject two to ten units of penicillin intradermally. But however, this itself can be fatal to the patient due to hypersensitivity. What you see is basically vital skin, vital skin reactions such as induration and you'll see if the patient is allergic to penicillin by doing this scratch test. Resistance is a major problem regarding the penicillins, okay? Since they are the one of the first dis discovered antibiotics, they're exploited by the physicians over the past, for past years. So almost all the bacteria have developed resistance to penicillins. So the main mechanism by which resistance is developed is by producing enzymes known as penicillinases, also which is a part of beta lactamases group. And this penicillinases, okay, what they do is they prevent the penicillins. Okay, you, as you know, the penicillin binds to the penicillin binding proteins. So these penicillinases prevent the penicillins from binding to penicillin binding proteins. So by doing so, they protect the bacteria from penicillins. The other mechanism by which um, resistance is there to penicillins is by altering the penicillin binding proteins of the bacteria. Uh, in gram-negative bacteria, there's something known as porins, which are protein channels present on the outer membrane of the bacteria, which sends the bacteria, which sends the penicillins out of the bacteria. By doing so, they provide protection to the bacteria. Okay, so now we'll see about semisynthetic penicillins. Semisynthetic penicillins includes acid-resistant penicillins. Example penicillin V, penicillin S resistant penicillins, example methicillin, cloxacillin, extended spectrum penicillins, which includes amino penicillins, example ampicillin, amoxicillin, carboxy penicillins, which includes carbenicillin, urido penicillins, which includes piperacillin. Now we'll see about penicillin V. Penicillin V is acid stable and it is orally active. Since it is acid stable, it can be taken orally and they are not degraded by the gastric acid. They are used for mild conditions like pharyngitis, sinusitis, otitis media, etc. Now we will see about penicillinase resistant penicillins. Okay, So they are active against bacteria producing penicillinases, but they are not ag active against methicillin resistant staph aureus also known as MRSA. This group of antibiotics is very dangerous, so they cannot be treated with any of the beta-lactam group of antibiotics. The most commonly preferred treatment for MRSA is vancomycin. Okay, so this group basically includes methicillin and cloxacillin. However, bacteria has developed resistance to these antibiotics also. First, we'll see about methicillin. Methicillin is not commonly used nowadays because better drugs are available. The most common adverse drug reactions associated with penicillin methicillin is that hematuria, albuminuria, and reversible interstitial nephritis. So, as you can see from the adverse drug reactions, methicillin is a nephrotoxic drug. So basically, um, you, you should be careful before administering penicillin to a renal failure patient. Okay, so if you got a right an example for a nephrotoxic drug, methicillin is a very good example. Okay. Now we'll see about extended spectrum penicillins. This includes amino penicillins, ampicillins, amoxicillin, carboxy penicillins such as carbenicillin, and urea penicillin such as piperacillin. First, we'll see about amino penicillins. This includes ampicillins. Almost all organisms which are sensitive to penicillin G are also sensitive to ampicillins. In addition to that, few gram-negative bacilli such as Haemophilus influenza are also sensitive to ampicillin. However, resistance has increased 
to ampicillin also. The common adverse drug reactions to ampicillins are diarrhea and rashes. Rashes are very common in especially in immunocompromised patients such as HIV patients. Okay? When HIV patients take amp ampicillin, the incidence of rashes is much common, much increased. Okay. Now let's see about the other amino penicillin, which is amoxicillin. In case of amoxicillin, diarrhea is less common compared to ampicillin. And amoxicillin is a very important component of the Helicobacter pylori triple drug regimen therapy, okay, which is used in the treatment of Helicobacter pylori infection, that is the peptic ulcer. The oral absorption of amoxicillin is better compared to ampicillin. Okay, now let's see about carboxypenicillins. This includes carbenicillin, which is active against Pseudomonas and Proteus. So, this is very important. Pseudomonas and Proteus are resistant to many antibiotics. So, carbenicillin is active against those bacteria. So, it is very helpful. Okay. However, if high doses of carbenicillin is given, it can lead to bleeding due to interference with platelet functions. They can be used in burns, urinary tract infections, septicemia, etc. In these cases, if the infections are caused by Pseudomonas or Proteus, Carbenicillin is effective. Now we'll see about uridopenicillins. Uridopenicillin basically includes piperacillin. This piperacillin is about eight times more active compared to carbenicillin. Okay, they're also active against Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, and Enterobacteria C. So, piperacillin is a better better alternative compared to carbenicillin in treating Pseudomonas and Klebs Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, and Enterobacteria C. They can be used in serious gram-negative infections caused by gram-negative bacteria in neutropenic, immunocompromised patients or burn patients. Okay. So, the final part of today's topic is beta-lactamase inhibitors. The beta-lactamase inhibitors basically includes clavulanic acid, sulbactam, and tazobactam. What they do is they inhibit the beta-lactamases, enzymes produced by the bacteria, so they basically increase the activity of beta-lactam beta, beta antibiotics. They are often used in combination with beta-lactam antibiotics. The most preferred combinations are amoxicillin plus cavalonic acid and piperacillin plus tesobactam. However, you gotta remember that when beta-lactamase inhibitors are given alone, they're not effective. They should often be combined with some form of antibiotics such as beta-lactam antibiotics to make them effective. That's it for today. Watch our video f first on patreon.com by visiting patreon.com slash simple and there are much more cool features waiting for you on our Patreon page. You can, you can download our slides on, the on our Patreon page by visiting the link which is given in the description below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel simple and share this video to your friends and follow our Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Google Plus to get notified about our upcoming videos. And please support us by donating on Patreon. Thank you.